Good morning. Welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee. Today we've got a little simple project for you. Uh, this is going to be a rebuild. Another one of my mistakes out here in the shop. But uh, several weeks ago, I put together a little uh, material stand to go with my uh, horizontal bandsaw. Uh, of course, this sets behind the saw to hold any long material, give it, you know, Hold it up until I can get it clamped down in there. And I made several mistakes when I when I built this. So uh, first off, it's not heavy enough. It weighs six and a half pounds, but the problem with that is it's as much top heavy. Top heavy. It's more so top heavy than it should be. Uh, needs more weight down here at the base. Uh, the second problem. Second thing I did wrong on this is I put a V to hold the material, just a piece of angle iron on the side. I put that up there and the problem with that is that depending on the diameter piece that you're using uh, determines how high this needs to be. You may be one that's set on top, maybe one that's set down at the bottom. So the height had to be adjusted for every different type of uh, material that I was using. The second problem with this up here was I made this rigid to the piece of uh, acme rod here. I believe that's three quarter inch acme. Meaning that I had to take the material off to run the screw up and down, which would which have been much better if this had stayed stationary. Now, ideally the nut that's on here I would have put a T-handle off each side of the nut and used it to run up and down, maybe uh, just let it, let it ride on this surface. But this piece right here with the nut already welded onto it was part of another project. It was uh, an old archery bovi uh, uh, yeah, bow vise that I had built years ago. Uh, worked okay for some of the older bows, but uh, with the longer limbs, but the Shorter bows now, just didn't work well with it. Uh, this piece was too, it, it slid in and out of a, a larger tube and there was too much play in there. Anyhow, this was something I salvaged off of another piece. So what we're gonna do today is uh, come up with uh, more weight for the base. Gonna cut this off up here and I think what I'm gonna do is put a roller up here. Uh, about four or five inches wide roller. Uh, doesn't have to have bearings or anything like that. Just a simple roller with some uh, standards on each end of it. What I'm gonna use for the, for the weight, my background noise may be a little loud. Let me turn that down a little bit. Eric Clapton's. Uh, can't stand it this morning, but uh, this is what I'm going to be using for uh, additional weight. As I said, this weighs about six and a half pounds as it is right now, but it's pretty much balanced from one end to the other, maybe even being a little bit top heavy. This is another five pounds that uh, I'll put at the bottom. I went up to uh, well, a little side note right quick. Uh, I go up to my mother's every morning, get her set up for the day. Today is her 92nd birthday. She's 97 years old, still lives on her own, uh, gets along fine. Of course, my sister and I care if she needs to go anywhere. But uh, I go up there every morning, get her set up for the day. And this morning when I went up there, I decided I'd go out to the old tractor shelter and I knew there was some wheel weights out there. Uh, here's a picture of the first thing I encountered uh, when I got to digging around under the shelter. Not really sure what kind, uh, what flavor snake he was, but uh, he's a dead one now. Uh, he wanted to be, you know, I don't usually try to kill something like that that I don't. Uh, uh, don't know is poisonous or dangerous or anything, but he wanted to be aggressive this morning instead of just getting out of my way. And uh, so 
poor fella, he's uh, he's probably gonna be cat food. Uh, there's some uh, a woods cats that hangs around up there. But as I was digging through the uh, pile of material there in the barn or under that shelter, several wheel weights in there. But I found this, and this is not a wheel weight. It is a weight. It weighs exactly five pounds, just like it is. Uh, but it's not meant to be a wheel weight. Uh, here's just, I'm wondering if you knew what this was before I tell you, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested. Uh, I've already cleaned a bunch of the rust off of it. But here's a quick picture that shows you what this was actually used for. All right, as you see, it's got a square hole. The old Dis Harris had a uh, square axle in them. Uh, that way the uh, disc blades didn't turn on the axle. And it, this is a, this is a piece of the standard on my uh, work, work stand. And it will almost go in there. Not quite, but almost. So what I'm going to do uh, is set this up on the mill and see if I can, uh, I've not, I've drilled cast iron before. I've never really milled any. But I'm going to see if I can't take a, a roughened end mill and clear out some of this material in there enough that that'll slide through there. I believe it was in my last video. Uh, I showed you this overhead rail system that I have up here for changing the uh, chucks out on the lathe and for the changing out the, the vise and the rotary table on the mill. So I didn't actually show you it in operation moving a piece but today's a good opportunity to show you that so bring the hoist over here this is the piece I come up with to uh, lift the vise with this will these edges will actually go under the jaws the fixed jaw and the uh, movable jaw now clamp down on this. This is positioned out here to get the center of gravity uh, so that the vise picks up uh, somewhat level. Okay, sorry about the audio on the uh, last segment there. Uh, evidently, my batteries, hope that's all it was on this new wireless microphone that I'm using here. But it cleaned out good inside there. Uh, the standard for and the base, or the, to mount the standard to the base, 
uh, I simply uh, cut a piece of flat bar uh, large enough that it would uh, drive fit into the square stock and threaded it quarter 20 in that end and then put a couple spring pins after I drove it in there spring pins that goes all the way through so that holds that in fine the base is uh, uh, the feet or the legs are 3 8 inch thick by 2 inch wide flat bar mortised into one another and then the feet are off an old chair just salvaged off an old chair just to give some uh, uh, adjustment to level it up or make it set level and again the hole uh, that we just milled out slides right over and that gives plenty of plenty of weight now I think probably the total weight on this now is probably about 11 pounds 11 and a half pounds but the key part is is that two-thirds of the weight is down at the bottom now I've already cut this piece off of the uh, the piece of threaded rod you can see I got uh, plenty of this Acme rod. So I cut it on back. Uh, now we're going to put this in the lathe. And I'm going to mill the threads off for about 3 eighths of an inch here. There will be a flat bar that will set on this and be able to turn somewhat freely on there. Alright, now I'm going to move the DRO in to three quarters of an inch and set them uh, set the carriage stop right there this is not a critical measurement uh, just want about three quarter inches of the threads taken off Alright, I'd love to take that down to a nominal half inch value if I can, even if it doesn't get exactly all the threads. So let's see about where we are. That's 620,000, so got about 120 thousandths to go. Alright, that's 18,000, so that should be right about there. Four hundred ninety-five thousand. So, half inch should slide right over that with no problem. I've got the vise mounted back on the mill now. And got it trimmed in. What we're going to work on now? I've got some uh, pieces of three-quarter inch. I believe that's what that is. Yeah, 0.7 inch thick uh, flat bar. Not sure where it come from, just something that I've got in some stock. It had a purpose at one time. It's got a nice quarter inch radius in the edge, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that. What I want to do now is uh, square off the ends. There'll be two of these pieces like this, this one and the one that's in the vise, uh, mounted on this. This hole will be uh, drilled out and reamed out to to match the uh, match the balls we put on the end of the uh, uh, 
piece of rod here. The roller then will be, will be a hole in the end of these. The roller will be machined down about three quarters of an inch on each end. It'll be cut to length. Once, once the length, it'll be made to length whatever this comes out to after we square up the ends. So I'm gonna work on squaring up these ends now. All right, this piece that I was working on appears to be the shorter of the two. So I'll go ahead and square it up and then we'll uh, machine the other one to be the same length as this one. We'll want these two to be the same, exact same height. All right, I've zeroed out the DRO, and I'm going to mount my work stop on the vise itself. Okay, with the combination of the DRO on zero and the work up against that stock, I should be able to duplicate this length. All right, now bring the DRO back to zero. Let's see how much of a bite that's gonna be. I'm gonna make one small pass before we come back to our zero mark. That's about half of what's left, about 40 thousandths there. Now we'll bring it, DRO down to zero. All right, those two pieces should be the same length now. Of course, need some deep burring. Deburring and cooling off as well. Now we'll put this in. This hole is you know, reasonably close to center when I cut it off. Uh, we'll square off both ends and then drill out the uh, drill out the hole, drill and remit to match our uh, acme rod. All right, I'm going to deburr this all three of the pieces and put the uh, drill chuck in. I also lay out a couple of holes in this end down here, in each end, uh, where we'll run screws from the bottom side up in there to mount the, uh, to mount the rollers. This stock that I'm using to make the, uh, the roller frame, again, is just uh, something I'm repurposing the hole was, this hole that I'm using was already in there, and it appears that it's a 2960 force. So I'm simply going to use the bit that matches that to line that up, get it reasonably centered on there. That looks good there. So I lock the X and Y down. I'm going to drill this out with a, uh, let's see, a 3164. 
a 64 less than a half. Zero out to X and Y in case I need to move the table. But what we'll do after I get that, get this drilled out, we'll start with a reamer that's a thousandths under a half. See how that fits. If our rod fits in there, then we'll we'll call it fine. If not, we'll keep moving up a little bit at the time, a thousandths at the time. I tell you what, let's slow that down. This reamer is a thousandths under a half. All right, again, I've got the uh, DRO zeroed out. Let's come out to the side and see how our piece of uh, uh, Acme rod fits in. I like that just like it is. I'm not going to go any larger. I've got four holes laid out in here. Uh, these will be drilled and counterboard for uh, quarter 20 socket head cap screws. So I'm just going to go through that process now of drilling each one of those, drilling and counterboard. I'll use transfer punches to uh, transfer these holes into our uprights for the uh, for the roller. And need to go down 250 thousandths depth, so I'm setting the uh, DRO. All right, I'll continue that process for the other three. Got all the pieces, got all the holes uh, drilled and counterboard in the bottom part of the uh, bearing housing, bearing mount. Now I'm going to set them up on here and transfer these holes. But to be sure everything stays in, uh, stays together, what I like to do is put a little witness mark on. So under this inside, I'm going to put one and one. Over here, I'll put two and two. That way when I transfer the marks, if there's any, if they're offering any at all from one end to the other, they should be together here. Transfer punch. It's not meant to make a countersink hole with, it's just meant to make yourself a mark, which it did. And we'll come to this end, do the same thing. Now I should be able to take my punch and increase those ind indicators. We've got the two bearing mounts, uh, ends for the bearing mount over here in the, uh, back in the mill. And what I'm going to use to line up with that is the wiggler. All right, I'm satisfied with that. All right, I'm going to repeat that process for the other, the remaining three holes. And then we'll measure for the uh, for the hole that the 
the roller will actually roll in. All right, got the four holes, drill, counterboard, got the two upright pieces for the bearing mount, roller mount, uh, drilled and tapped, all four holes. Now the actual, the drill to hole that the roller is gonna go on, I'm gonna hold off on that until I get the roller finished. It turned out the distance from outside to outside is just uh, just a fraction over five inches uh, by pure coincidence. So uh, I was not searching for a nominal value, just keeping that hole in the middle. But I'm gonna put this over in the lathe now and face off both ends. And uh, these blocks are actually 0.7. I'm going to come in uh, 0.75, 750 thousandths from each end, turn them down to a uh, uh, nominal value. I'm thinking probably half inch. Zero out the DRO and come in seven hundred fifty thousandths. And set the carriage stop as usual. All right, we've got about 35 more thousandths to go to get that down to five eighths. So there's 20, 30, five. I'm going to turn this around, do the same thing to the other end, then we'll come back to our housing. All right, I've got the roller finished now. <clears throat> got each end turned down to five-eighths of an inch. I never did even check what the outside diameter, this was just a piece that was in my material bin over there. That's uh, 1.425. So what we're going to do now, I've got some holes laid out on here, quarter inch down plus half the, uh, half the diameter, and then centered on this axis. So I'm going to pull these off, carry them over to the mill, drill a 5 8 hole uh, for, the, for them. All right, I'll deburr these two pieces, cool them off, deburr them. All right, I have the uh, 
the holes drilled in the uh, two end pieces. Uh, what I think I'm going to do now, just to dress them up a little bit, I've used a set of dividers and put a little radius or laid out a little radius on there. And I think I want to turn to the uh, belt grinder here and see if I can take that off. I might do well to put on a uh, full face shield while I'm doing this. what I've come up with now. Uh, as you can see, i got more of a tombstone profile to it. I'm using an 80 grit belt uh, to do this rough grinding, and it's leaving, obviously, a rough surface up there. After I get the other one done, I'll put a finer belt on there and, and clean that up all the way around. But I'm going to do the same thing to the other piece. All right, I'm going to put a little finer grit belt on now. This is 150 grit, not real fine, but it's uh, it's plenty fine for what we're working on right here. And I think you can see, got a much, much smoother finish on there now. All right, one more piece I want to do before I uh, put all this together. I know by now many of you are thinking this is sure a bunch of overkill just for a little material stand to go on a saw, but I'm having fun. It's definitely overkill, but I'm having fun. What I'm going to make now, instead of drilling through the center of this to put a T-handle on, I'm going to make a ring on ring to go over this with uh, threaded on both sides. I'll put a little flat surface on this uh, for it to uh, tighten down against, the ring to tighten down against, just to make a T-handle. To make the T-handle collar for the uh, Acme rod here, I've got a piece of uh, inch and one-eighth round stock uh, just out of my little part supply bin over there. I'm going to drill this out. Uh, with a starter drill, then drill it out with a 5 8 then bore it to where it will, uh, uh, this will uh, slide in there.
All right, I think everything is finally machined now. Um, the collar will go on the rod as such with the uh, quarter 20 bolts on each side. and clamp down on the flat. This of course will set on top of it with the tombstone pieces and the roller in. I'm going to degrease and deburr and paint some pieces and then bring you back for a, uh, a final wrap up for this series, for this video. So here is the uh, finished product. Painted up, got the coarse black and red uh, paint scheme that goes with the rest of the shop. Height adjustment with a piece of uh, threaded rod in there with the roller at the same height. Got plenty of adjustment in here for additional height. A uh, project coming up soon uh, is I'm going to make a lift legs. Uh, to get the uh, bandsaw up a little bit higher. It's just not comfortable down here at this level. So I hope you enjoyed this little project.